Hi, Dorit. Hi. How, How are, are you? Good. Anniversary. Happy yes. anniversary. Happy anniversary, yeah. Happy is one way to look at it. Uh, let me start with the first question. Where were you when WannaCry happened? Okay, very interesting question. So first we were all in preparations for CPX in Milan. So we were about to uh, board flights and go to a very large customer event and uh, um, present all our stuff, uh, regular uh, material, uh, everything we are proud of. And then uh, comes the notification that there is something like WannaCry. It doesn't come in one notice, it comes in wave until you understand the whole aspect. So initially there are some news and the, you have to understand all the implications. It takes a few hours until you, you understand everything related to it. I was at home with my geek family mm -hmm. um, and um, I'm already uh, uh, aware that when something like this comes, you have to prepare yourself in, in multiple aspects and get ready to kind of the unknown that's coming to you because all the time more news are coming and you should uh, uh, start to build your own story on what's the real thing in the world. Okay, so it's the story is starting to evolve. Yes. So what happens next in terms of, of our company and, and how do we protect our customers against? So we actually have uh, three main aspects here. We have to look at ourselves as a company, at our, uh, at our IT, at our uh, own infrastructure. We have to look at our customers, at the product. How could we protect them? First priority for us to understand if we could stop any problems that they have. And the third aspect is how to remediate if somebody has a problem or how to answer questions. So how to... Uh, help them understand what's going on with them. It goes alongside with research, that we start to do research, understanding the spread in the world, who is infected, who is not, kind of collect more evidence from the world. So in each of these aspects, we start to build our own kind of task team, our own internal team, our own products team are starting to work on how to defend our customers and our uh, IR and our customer facing function, how to answer the questions, what information we could collect for them, etc. Interesting. Okay, so from there, it just started a wave of other mega attacks, like uh, to name a few, NotPetya that followed it, and the SolarWinds, Log4j, etc. How, how did the checkpoint address its roadmap towards it? Yeah, so it's first, uh, we got more professional in building these different levels when, when some news are starting. So we already know uh, as, as Log4j starts, we already know we have to kind of open all these threads. We are uh, very quick to open them and to summon all the right people to the right uh, parts. We have a clear methodology. We have a better methodology and we, we go and improve it on uh, after the events. The second part is that it was clear that ransomware is a thing and we need to help uh, protect against ransomware and zero days. And we significantly improved our product offering against ransomware, the anti-ransomware on the endpoint and other methods. And all the zero day uh, capabilities were greatly enhanced to identify many more zero day cases as well as potential entry vectors for such a problem. So uh, the, the aspect of how we protect the customers got uplifted significantly over the years. Thanks, Reid. Very interesting. Can you give a more recent example on how we adapt as a company to those threats? Yeah, one, one example that I'm very proud of is uh, around the Log4j uh, incident. So part of what we're trying to do is to understand uh, uh, what parts of the product could protect and what parts of the product may be already protecting you. So uh, when Log4j came, which was an unknown vulnerability that was clearly translated to Log4Shell as an attack, we realized that our web application and API protection are preemptively protecting customers against this attack. And this is a great achievement because we know that everyone, everyone that had been protecting themselves with the application protection and API protection was already safe against Log4Shell. So this is our, uh, let's say, uh, the biggest dream is to be preemptive against more and more uh, zero-day uh, things. And, and if I may add, it wasn't even anecdotal. There was a spring for shell like later on, and yes. yet again, we yes. preemptively blocked it. Yes, so um, it's definitely part of our DNA and drive as a company and as roadmap is to build technologies that would be as future safe as possible and as 
unpredicted events as possible. Great. Thanks, Dorit. Very inspiring and as always very uh, informing and educational to listen to you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>